And I am so excited you've decided to spend part of your day with me and my special guest today for this episode of our Hour of Pencil Power. This is what I got to be our 53rd day of every day at noon doing a kids special for all the kids and families around the world, a creative hour of pencil power. And I'm so glad to have today we have special guests, NASA artist, uh, Jack Moore, John Streeter, and NASA educator. Oh, you're right there. I'm not used to all these cameras. This is like, ah! And we have Patricia Moore, who is a NASA educator. I'm so, so honored to be part of this webcast. I'm banging the table. Poor thing's knocking around. Um, today, uh, our episode is about exploring space with the Artemis program. And we're, we, I'm going to let Jack introduce that. And uh, uh, Patricia and John, you guys take it away, and then I'll start drawing when you're ready. It's, it's, it's so cool. It, it, it was it was just on Wednesday we had a conference call. With, can you guys hear me okay? Can you hear me thumbs up? Okay. Uh, it was just, remember we got an email from Rad. Thank you, Rad uh, Senyak and all the Artemis artists for inviting us to do this. It's so cool. Well, you know, we're, we're really thrilled to be here. So, uh, Mark, thanks for, for having us. And uh, we, we got some really cool stuff that we want to share, but uh, I, you know, I just want to tell you a little bit about, you know, how important it is. You know, it, it's so great that that you're out there and you're inspiring people because NASA, we we kind of need artists, <laughs> right? It's right in the name, art to miss, right? <laughs> so, um, but you know, a lot of these cool things, like that cool picture you have there, we have artists working behind the scenes that are are helping to communicate these very technical programs. You know, when when you talk about Going to the moon, a lot of the the planning exists in, in formulas and uh, in computer models, and that's really hard to communicate how awesome it is. So it's the job of the artist to really sort of interpret these and share them with the public, because that's that's kind of a big thing at NASA. We want to make sure everybody knows what we're doing and how exciting this is, um, and and we're bringing everybody along for the ride through the medium of art. So it's so cool to be able to hear uh, be here and share this with you. So. Um, I do want to share something. I, I I hope this doesn't embarrass you, Mark, but you know I've been a big fan of yours for a while. Uh, in fact, I have a, a photograph that my mom took of oh, us. Oh, I think I know what this is. You did this at that uh, Comic Con one time. So, you know, it's, it's, this is a kind of a fun little recap of, uh, oh, look, I see it. I see the picture. I'm watching YouTube on my other camera. <laughs> so this hey, is my center too. I want to show Mario. Mario, give me your phone. I'm going to put you on YouTube so you can see this. Jack, that you look at that. Was I ever that young? Were we ever that young? I know. Right. I, I, I still feel like a 10 year old at heart sometimes, you know, cause I, I my drawings have gotten a little better, thankfully, but <laughs> But I also have evidence you're, that you invented the first selfie. Space, so, even back then. oh yeah, that you know it was a it was a big inspiration for me. I always loved drawing space stuff, and so I feel like I, I kind of landed in the right career. And uh, you know, we've got some some cool stuff to to share for folks that that want to express themselves and 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 you know draw, uh, you know what's happening at NASA. And if you'll indulge me, Mark, I want to share you a, just a, a short video, just kind of capture how we're doing it with the Artemis program, all, all the different elements that are coming together. Do you mind if I show a, a, just a quick short video? Oh. oh, please do, please do. All right, so uh, let's, uh, let's take a look at uh, how we'll go to Mars. So you want to go to Mars. How do we send humans to deep space? In order for humans to explore the moon, Mars, and beyond, we need safe, flexible, and powerful systems that will make it all possible. We start with the world's largest spaceport, 
At Kennedy Space Center, we have all the buildings and tools needed to assemble and launch space vehicles and have the teams in place to recover the astronauts when they come home to Earth. Next up, we need a deep space rocket. This is NASA's space launch system. It will be the most powerful rocket NASA has ever built, and it has the muscle to lift people and all of the equipment needed for missions to new worlds. The space launch system will blast off with the crew in the Orion spacecraft. The most advanced spacecraft ever built for human exploration, Orion provides the life support, power, communications, and other systems to safely transport astronauts on a variety of exploration missions, like to the moon. In lunar orbit, we will learn to live and work in a deep space environment, something we have never done before. In future missions, NASA's Gateway will be a place for astronauts to live, work, and prepare for missions deeper into the solar system. There you have it. NASA's Deep Space Exploration Systems, charting our new future in space. To find out more about deep space exploration, visit this NASA website. All right, so that's just kind of a, a, a fun example of how we engage our artists to share our story. And in fact, that video, was it that video? Is that one the ending? We don't hear the ending. Oh. Uh, okay, we're good. So uh, that video, we have the artist that actually did a lot of that artwork and produced this video. Uh, joining us live right now, John Streeter. Hey, John. Hi there. Can you hear me okay? Hi, John. Hi. Thanks for having me on the show. Thanks for being here, man. So, yeah. So, so John and I um, got to work on a really cool series together to um, to kind of put together some really fun videos for for kids to talk about how NASA is going to go to Mars one day and how we're going to go to the moon first to prepare. So, um, John, why don't you talk a little bit about the process and kind of how we get started and and how it starts from the beginning until the final end product that you just saw now. Sure thing. Well, uh, the great thing about this project is that it involves art. I'm a video producer by trade, but I'm also an artist, and I have a professional background in that as well. And so to get to combine video production and art is a real thrill. So Patricia, I appreciate you uh, spearheading this, this program because it's been a lot of fun to work on. In doing this video, uh, you actually get to do two sets of drawings. So the first set of drawings are quick sketches. Uh, they could be black and white, but they're just to give an idea to the people who are going to read the script of what kind of art we're going to make and what the animation is going to look like. And you don't put a lot of time into those. You just want to give the audience uh, an idea of what it's going to be. So once NASA approves that script, then we go and make the finished art, the full color art. And that's what you saw in the video that you just rolled. And uh, that is digital art, but uh, my background in art, I really love hand-painted and hand-drawn uh, type of art, not computer uh, art, so to speak. So uh, even though it's a computer program, it has uh, paint brushes that are digital paint brushes that give that specific look of a hand-painted or hand-drawn type of artwork. And so that's what we're going for uh, in that show, and that's one of the things that makes it so fun. Yeah, it was super fun. And and so how how long does it take you to draw, you know, to to draw all of those characters and all the different pieces just for one show? Yeah, well, it, it can take a while because, you know, the spacecraft are kind of complex and uh and then there's so many interesting things about uh Orion, it can go into deep space. And so uh those missions are meant to go beyond low Earth orbit. So there's all kinds of exciting things to paint, uh, the, the moon and Mars and uh, missions on Mars and missions on the moon. So uh, it's, they can take a while. Like, like it might be like a day for a, one day for a whole drawing. And, and it's done in layers. It's done, I, I make a sketch first and then uh, I make a more tighter uh, drawing that uh, has more detail on it. And then I start adding colors, and then we start adding shading. And uh, one of the things that the astronauts always talk about at NASA is that the colors are more uh, vivid and, and vibrant in space than what we see in, in photographs. And uh, some of my favorite space artists, like Bob McCall and uh, 
or even Ralph McQuarrie, who, who did the pre-production paintings for Star Wars, the Star Wars art. I'm a big fan of those guys, and they always add extra little bit of color and uh, lighting to the to their paintings. And uh, so I try to emulate that style as well, just adding some more color uh, to the, the scenarios, the missions, and whether I'm uh, drawing a person on the moon or on Mars or the spacecraft flying through space. Yeah, and so, uh, Mark, we've got a fellow Emmy award-winning artist on the show with you today. So, John, tell us about your Emmy. We won an Emmy for the series. Ooh, well, thank you. Hey, I want to uh, uh, ask John something, if I can uh, yeah. interject. Uh, hey, John, um, today uh, Patricia and I are going to be talking about how important it is for the for the kids and all the, the grandmas and grandpas and aunts and uncles and moms and dads who are drawing with us today. Uh, to take that that uh, risk, the creative risk, to draw something and not be afraid to fail, and to to just give them that the creative license to explore and to create and have fun. And how, when you started drawing, how many times have you have started a drawing it with an image in your head and it just flopped big time and you started another one? How many times has that, has that happened to you before? Oh, it happens all the time, and and. Uh... You know, the thing about it is sometimes, they can, like with this NASA stuff, it's, it can be very complex. And, uh, and uh, yeah, you have to, you're right, you have to be able to ready, be ready to fail at it and then try it again. And usually, that, though, that, what I... You hear that? Just, it, you have to be able to fail, fail, make mistakes. And we're going to be talking about that uh, many, many times again. That's right. Just keep drawing, draw, draw, draw. It's gonna, if, if it flop, it's fine. You just you turn the page and try it again, try it again, try it again. Definitely. Usually it turns out better the second time anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys yeah, want to watch, I, if you want to watch some of those videos that the So You Want to Go to Mars series, um, there's a link in the chat box. You can, there's a playlist. We've got a couple of them and I know we're working on some more. So that's just one fun example of the kind of NASA artists we have um, on our Artemis team. And you're going to put that in, that a link on the post, right? Yes, on the, uh, on the, I think it's that, already uh, in the chat. And on uh, Instagram, too. Okay, perfect. <laughs> All right. Well, awesome. Well, um, I, I have to admit, I think uh, Patricia and I feel a little out of our league since we're the only ones that don't have an Emmy here. So, uh, John, thanks for, for coming in and, and sharing your story and, and uh, you. talking Thank your you art. Thank so much, John. All right, and good luck to all the artists out there. I'm going to be watching. All right, and drawing. Maybe you could do a drawing with us and post your drawing with us, okay? Very good. Thank you so much. All right. Well, I'm making, I'm getting ready to draw. Are we ready for me to start drawing, Jack? Oh, my gosh. Please. This is awesome. I'm so All excited. Right. Let's, let's go. All right. Bye, John. And, oh, look. At, here's here's a shameless plug for my book. Talking about, <laughs> Jack, talking about fail, fail, fail to succeed. <laughs> this is my 19th book. And I've, I, it, since I, I, my first book came out when you were a baby, when you heard that picture. <laughs> I don't know if you remember that. When you, this is like, oh, my gosh, 28. 29 years ago, 30 years ago, and after 19 books, I finally, my dream was to get a book with over a million uh, kids drawing from it, and this is it, a million families, so yay me, right? Uh, you have to be willing to take those risks, you guys, to just keep trying and try and try until, until you uh, succeed. So today, we're going to put that, uh, that idea into actuality. We're going to do it right now. We're going to draw the artist. Now, I totally recommend you go to the a link. Uh, I think it's at the NASA website, right, Jack? Yep, Where that's you can right. Actually, you can see this. Actually, I printed these up, these little reference cards. But I love this picture right here of the, the female astronaut going, we're going to the moon. Isn't that awesome? And uh, so today we're going to draw this rocket. And then um, hopefully if I can get Jack and Patricia, uh, <laughs> if I don't freak them out too bad with this, we're going to draw the giant, the biggest rocket ever to launch on the planet Earth. We're going to tra draw the gateway orbiting of the moon. That's going to be the gate, that the portal that the, they, they got to with this to get down to the surface of the moon and all the stages. So let's get going. So I'm looking. I'm going to go to my cheat sheet here. I actually have these to show. And I, I rehearsed. I did a warm-up drawing. I see. Practice, practice, practice. I'll show you real quick. I, but you can't see in my notes. I have all these crazy notes. But see, last night, Jack and I did a rehearsal. We did a warm-up of it to make sure that we... Practice, practice. All right, so here we go. Now, I'm going to start. Now, I'm going to do my lesson a little differently than these wonderful artists at uh, Artemis. 
they did, they used a computer to draw these wonderful foreshortened circles and these step to step. We're going to end up with that. We're going to end up at the same place. We're just going to use a different style. My style is going to be one of more of a, a sketchy, just a freehand, a freehand pencil sketch style. Also, I'm going to take my, instead of having the looking straight at it, I'm going to turn it three quarter view. Most artists, not all artists, but most artists will take the image and will turn it just a bit instead of having it straight at or a horizontal profile. So, Mark, I'm going to draw along. I thought you were having a, a microphone, so. I'm going to draw so along with you, and uh, I may uh, I may use the uh, the reference in the PDF. So, and if anybody wants to download it, it's uh, on the chat too. So, um, we'll 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 try both different styles so people can see them side by side as we draw along. Oh, this would be that, that's awesome! Great idea! Great idea! Now, what I'm going to do is now this is the most difficult thing for me to teach children around the world is to draw lightly, very light, draw a guideline angling uphill. I call this, and get your cat to make sure the cat does <laughs> draw. He draws that, see? Oh, that cutie cat. My cat's under my, my, my feet right now. I got Flash and Gordon. So, is that a funny name? We yell, Flash, Gordon. We have two cats. All right, draw the light line. This is the most difficult thing. You can barely see it on the camera, I know, right? Can you see it at all, uh, Patricia? Yeah, I can see it. It's light, but I can see it. All right. A very, very light line. See, now it's, it's wobbly. I, I could use a ruler. I've got rulers. Look at this. i got a couple rulers here, right? But I'm, I'm not. I'm going to go freehand. Really quick note. I want you guys, I want all you kids to get a sketchbook with a spiral binding. And as you do these drawing lessons with us, with uh, our Artemis project, you can get any kind of sketchbook. Make sure it's a hard cover and it has spiral binding so you can save these and collect them. And then you go to... You go to NASA and have Jack and Patricia sign them. Yeah, any pencil, any pencil will do. I just committed you, Jack and Patricia. Yeah. All right, all right. Time. Any pencil will do. Uh, any any eraser will do. Okay, and I love a pencil, a blending stump. That's all I need. Those three tools right there in your sketchbook. Now, a light line. That's the hardest thing for me to teach. Now, the hardest thing for me to teach you parents and grandparents, aunts and uncles and adults, is to literally draw anything at all. <laughs> it's a confidence issue. It's the kids want to draw, just carve it. You just want to gouge that line. The adults are very, very. Look at Jack. He's taking off. Oh, is it? What is this? A competition? <laughs> oh my gosh! Go, Jack. Go, boy. I'm just trying to. I'm that trying to the, kind of watch the the feed and and draw at the same time. It's a little trickier than I thought. <laughs> the four shorts and circles, a squished circle. Parents, please just to try. If you can write your name, you can draw. Let me say that again. If you can write your name, you can draw. And any everybody. So kids, if your parents are watching this and they're saying, oh, I can't even draw that straight. Look it. Is that straight? That's wiggly. That's not even straight. I've been drawing for 40 years. 40 years on TV. And I still make wiggly lines. It's fine. All right. Now, we get over the confidence issue. Pick up your pencil and draw. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to pretend that we're actual artists with NASA, like Jack and Patricia and John. We're going to convey that information from the scientists and from the engineers and the visionaries at NASA. We're going to take all that, mum that mumbly, amazing technical language and put it into a visual image that will ignite the fascination and the awe and the splendor of space travel for the world. So artists play a pivotal part, a key role at NASA to share the joy and the wonder and the splendor and the intrigue, the mystery of space travel. I, I just, I've always been a huge fan of NASA. So now curve this. This is called contour. Okay. So we started. See what I'm doing? I'm looking at, the, I'm looking at the picture. I'm looking at NASA's. The, if you're an artist, I'm looking at this. We're going to put. Now, my proportions will be a little bit different. That's fine. We're just, we're doing a, a sketch. Look at mine's kind of wobbly. Look at Jack. Nice drawing, Jack. He's doing a profile. Now, a word about the four shorts and circle and these four shorts and circles that the NASA artists use to show you how to draw. They're using four shorts and circles on a horizontal guideline. I'm using an angled guideline, turning it three quarter view. It's coming down into your point of view. And my son is so cool. He just brought me a cup of coffee. Aww. Oh my gosh. Mario, I'll hey, take one too, please. There. We got to put you in it. We gotta, I just got to stop everything. I, I'll, if I can, I'm going to dedicate 
Marlon, you may be, you know, here, yeah, he's never bought me coffee before. Okay, hold Aww. on, a I'm going to flip this around. This is this is my son, me and my son Mario hanging out here. There's my son Mario. Look hey, at Mario. Their shirts. They have matching shirts. Isn't that funny? <laughs> Mario, show me your shirt. But I'm going to get out of the way. There's Mario. Thank you, Mario. I love you. Say hi to everybody. Say hi to the world. Oh, and he, he loves vacuums. He's, he's a vacuum extraordinary. He's, he made a vacuum for the or, or Orion spacecraft, and I'm going to show it to you in a second here. Thank you, Mario. That was very cool. You brought me coffee. <laughs> what a cool kid. Oh, my gosh. Hey, Mark, can, right. I, can I tell everybody what you're, the part that you're drawing right now? Please. What, what did it be? Yeah, oh, yeah. Go, so go, 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 the, the real fast. So the two main parts that we're we're drawing today of the Orion is the um, the crew module, which is what we have already drawn right there, and that's where four astronauts will uh, ride uh, to the moon. And then the part that he, uh, Mark is drawing right now, the back end is called the service module, and that's what powers Orion and gives um, the astronauts all the power they need and um, inside the spacecraft to do all the computer operations and all, all those sorts of things. And in a minute, we're going to draw the solar panels, and that's where we get the power. So there's not fuel cells. If you're a big space nerd like us, we use fuel cells during the Apollo and space shuttle days. We didn't use solar panels, but Orion has solar panels, and that's what's going to um, give our spacecraft electricity and power while we're in space. All right, back to drawing. Uh, oh, yeah, that was awesome. Boy, that didn't say to hurry because I love all that information. Tell me more about the solar panels. Sure. Uh, so, wait. yeah. By so, the way, just, I'm using a guide point right there. Put a guide point, you guys. And then all these wings, the wings are going to come off from the guide point. See, we're going to draw these four back wings. Uh, tape it up. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, so um, the solar panels along with our service module, the back end I mentioned is being built by our European Space Agency partners. So this first Artemis mission, Artemis 1, is an international mission because we've got um, our, our, part, our partners in Europe working with us. And those solar panels aren't stretched out when we first launch. So Orion is going to sit on top of the Space Launch System rocket. Um, and it, all those solar panels are squished in, you know, and protected during launch. And then once we get into space and Orion safely orbiting the Earth and, and, and then onto, onto the moon, um, we slowly stretch them out, kind of like um, an accordion is all kind of folded in and they're just kind of slowly stretched out. Um, and then they get to work uh, powering the spacecraft. So it's, they're pretty cool. Oh, this is awesome. And notice how there's four of them, right? And so these, this one's the largest one. So this is the word size. These are the 12 Renaissance words, you guys. If you learn these 12 words, you can draw anything, anything at all in 3D. All right, so this is larger, this is closer, this one's a little more distorted. Drawing in 3D is learning how to distort and squish. Squish and distort your image. Someone type that in the text box, would you? Type in squish. Squish and type in distort. Now, Patricia, tell me if they, they're coming up with that. All right, I'll look. Really important idea to be able to squish and distort to make something look 3D. Here's a perfect example, and I'm, I know, I don't know, I'll break all kinds of rules here for webcasting, but I'm gonna show you this because it's my favorite toy. All right, so a lot of my students, I go, yay, I did it. Uh, I had a bunch of my students over the past 40 years uh, animate the movies that you guys have enjoyed, Frozen, Despicable Me, Toy Story, um, Kung Fu Panda, yeah, and Mara has all these videos. Uh, but look at the Minions goggles right here. Now watch this. Watch what happens. That's a circle, right? Just look at one eye. And as I tilt the goggles, it squishes, right? This is called, this is a foreshortened circle. And I was talking to Rad about this because Rad, uh, the, the fellow who invited us to do this program, uh, along with Team Artemis Artist, um, he, he grew up with Jack, like Jack, uh, watching this old sh this show, The Secret City. I'll, I'll put it on so you guys can see that this old show, look, it was ever that young. Mm -hmm. from uh, 1989 or 87, and it, the whole uh, lesson, the first couple lessons were all about foreshorts and circles, and it's so p key, it's so pivotal, pivotal, and learning how to squish and distort to create that optical illusion. So 3D is creating the visual illusion, the optical illusion, of making one part look closer than the other. That's the idea, okay? Now, in future episodes, Jack and, and Patricia, if I don't freak you out too bad and you want to do this again with me, I really want to talk about the root of perspective, the science behind it, 
It's really interesting. I've, I'm, in fact, I have a new book coming out talking all about that. It's fascinating. But it's going to help us draw the gateway or draw the launch pad or draw the actual uh, habitats on the moon. Now, now look at this. I'm going to slant this one back just a bit. How are you guys doing? It. You guys, give me a one through ten out there. Text Patricia in the in the in the information box in your comment box on YouTube. Give us a one through ten. How are you doing? How many yes. tens do we have? Ten being fantastic and one being. Yeah, I'm gonna go with something else. Hey, Mark, do you want me to say hi to a couple of people that are joining us? Yes, yes. All right. So um, D. Kelly says, "Oh, Mario is the best." <laughs> Mario, you have fans on YouTube coming yeah. on. Yeah, and Newstar313. post with Mario, I get like 800 views. So Yeah, <laughs> and Newstar313 uh, says squish and distort. So you got somebody typing it in for you. And then we have Squish to get distort. and then we have to get a shout out to our girls, Elizabeth and Evelyn, who are watching with um, Darrell. They're, they're watching and drawing with us too. So when you guys are finished, make sure you're going to post your drawings on social media, or you can take a picture and put them in the comments below, but you want to do the hashtag draw Artemis because maybe Is one of your draw Artemis. Artemis. That you do? Yeah, that's it. Because then, hashtag um, draw. now look at you guys, look at, always do this. Look at this. Always put art. Look at that. <laughs> hashtag Artemis. That's right. And then, right, um, maybe that. NASA will, will post too, your picture. Too. So the Orion uh, spacecraft. Right the Orion Spacecraft yes, Twitter page has been posting a lot of your drawings. Um, and so if you want your drawing featured on one of the NASA social media channels, make sure you post it and, and hashtag draw Artemis. Okay, now these lines right here are called contour, curvy lines, okay? And I have, there's a, there's, there's a free, just so you guys know, I'm going to make sure that we put, put this in the post. It's a free reference guide of all 12 of these words that I faced the entire the Secret City series and also the Imagination Station series. Okay, well, and you saw the opening graphic, uh, the, my, my Draw 3D. Now, if you go to draw3d.com, you guys, you uh, click the printables, and they're free. There's, a, there's some free lessons on here, too, but the important thing is there's free reference charts, and this is one of the reference charts. Another reference chart that I use is, another reference uh, that I use is the uh, drawing compass. See this angle right here? These are the four drawing positions that most artists, not all artists, but most artists, and Jack, you can back me up on this, so you let me know. These are the four positions that most artists use to, to draw the characters or draw the environments or draw objects in the environment. Not all the time, because Jack is drawing right here. Jack's going east-west. See, so it's not all, not all the time, but most of the time. Is that right, Jack? Are yeah, technically, so I, I am following that format, but I like to spin my image around just based on the, the comfort of my hand positioning. So that's that definitely holds true for me, but I, 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 I tend to spin it around. So in space, you know, there's no up or down. So a lesson right there. Your drawing is not glued down, you guys. You can spin it, and you can move it. A lot of, lot of first-time students, and most of the adults will keep their paper, they'll think their paper's locked down tape. It's not. You can twist and turn. You can twist and turn it. Uh, how many windows, Patricia? How many windows? Oh, oh, like, oh, um, you Let's know what? I'm not sure right without here. looking at the picture. <laughs> oh. There's definitely two uh, right, primary yeah, windows. Look. Yeah. Look. Can, I, can I put, can I put, put as many, out the window? you put, put as many okay. as you want. Okay, I'm gonna put, here, here, I'm going to put my son, Mario. He, he got invited to go on this trip. <laughs> So here's Mario. And that's going to be Mario. the cleanest Orion spacecraft and the most well vacuumed spacecraft ever. Mario, look at you're, you're you're right there, and Mario, you know what you're doing? Mario, you're waving, and you're you're right you're right. Hi, Dad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he has that. Here, he, he this is the vacuum. Look, he wanted me to show you this. Yeah. Look. You know when uh, we when we so go back cool. to the moon. Uh, he made the vacuum. For, so he can vacuum the inside of the capsule, Mario. That's so that awesome. Funny? You it's know, so that's happy. that's going to be something we have to... Oh, something... I need to give, Patricia, give me two names. Two more names of two kids. And I'll put uh, we'll do my girls. Kids. Do Evelyn and Elizabeth. Evelyn and Elizabeth. Here's Evelyn. Evelyn and Evelyn have long hair or short she hair? She has short... They both have short hair. Okay, well, I'll give them long hair. Oops. All right. <laughs> they've, been on, they've, been on, they've been on Orion for... Couple weeks, right? Yeah. So how so, long was the mission to 
to the moon take? It'll That's take a good like question. How many days will it take to get to the moon? So astronauts can live comfortably in Orion um, for about 21 days, but that's but they may not be inside the spacecraft that long because it only takes two to three days to get to the moon and then another two to three days to get back. And when we go to the moon, we're not going to spend the whole time in the spacecraft. Um, our goal is to have the first woman and the next man on the surface of the moon in 2024. That's not that far from now. So the Orion spacecraft is what um, the astronauts will fly in. And then once they get to the moon, they'll use a lander to get to the surface. Oh my gosh. Back to the moon. Wow. 2024. Well, you know, the really exciting thing is, is that after that, um, we're going to have a, a series of missions with the goal of, of maintaining a presence on the moon. So by 2028, we, we want to make sure that we've set up all the infrastructure we, we need so that we can continue doing testing uh, and learning from working in the lunar environment so that we can achieve our big goal, which is eventually getting humans to Mars. So th that's really exciting to think that we're going to have uh, a, a laboratory on the moon where we're going to be doing and testing uh, and practicing for those longer missions to, to explore the red planet. So there's a lot of really exciting things happening in, in just the next few years with 2024 and then by 2028 having a sustained presence. So th these are really exciting times. Yeah. And then you could have one of your students um, who is drawing with you right now might be an astronaut that goes to Mars or maybe they're one of the artists that get to help prepare um, and get things moving. Because we talked about, there are lots of different kinds of NASA artists. Well, some of this, everything, when you're imagining a, a, developing a new spacecraft or a spacesuit or a rocket or, or even a piece of like, like the solar panel, anything, it all starts with a drawing, right? So um, an engineer or an artist work together and they come up, okay, this is what I think it needs to look like. And they're taking a pencil and they're drawing it on a piece of paper or they're doing it on a whiteboard in the middle of a meeting. So all of these amazing space crafts and rockets all start with that drawing done by hand. And then it gets moved into the computer and then it gets all fancy and then they do all the technical stuff and make it work and figure out how to put all the pieces together. But it all starts with a drawing. Uh, what you just said right there just validates validates 40 years of my of my campaign and teaching and just relentless re, uh, repetition of how important drawing is draw everything everything that's that's manufactured everything that's man-made is drawn first this pencil right uh this these headsets right here the camera, the, it, 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 your chair you're sitting in, the table, the books behind you, Patricia, mm -hmm. the camera that's on that shelf right there, had to be drawn by an artist first. So the visual arts are fundamental. They're, they're, the visual arts are visual communication. Again, that's what we're doing. We're showing what things look like, how they work, how they fit together. We're sharing the, the, the dreams and the visions in our imagination. And we're helping the artists and the, the scientists and the engineers at NASA share their visions with the world through art, through the visual pictures. That's right. And, um, and on the next episode, I'm sorry, go ahead. You know, well, um, just to add on to that, um, so one of your uh, followers, D. Kelly, has a great question. She wants, or he or she, I don't know which, but um, he or she wants to know, my kids want to know how to become NASA artists. It sounds so amazing. <laughs> so, Jack, why don't, maybe while you're drawing, you can tell them about your path to NASA. Oh, man. So, yeah, I... I I, you know, I grew up watching um, Secret City, but, you know, I also watched a lot of Star Wars. I watched a lot of Star Trek. I was just completely fascinated with all things science fiction, and, and I was really driven to create my own worlds and, and, and draw. Uh, so I, I've always had this sort of fascination with space and, and a passion for drawing and creating. And so when I went to school... Um, I studied graphic arts. Um, I, I, I had a few routes. I actually started uh, taking some classes in aviation. I did communications classes. I did theater at some point. I was all over the map. You know, I, I knew I wanted to be creative. I, I, I wanted to do something with, with aerospace, uh, but I couldn't quite figure out the mash. And so at the time I was working at Space Center Houston and I, I got a job doing some communications for the visitor center and it clicked. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm creating this beautiful content. And at the same time, I'm getting to work in the space industry. And, and that career path eventually led me to NASA, where I'm able to uh, essentially do something very similar. So in my role, I'm an exhibits uh, manager. 
And so I, I work with a, a program, a contract of very talented people, and we get together and we brainstorm awesome interactives and displays that showcase what NASA is doing in very unique ways. And, and nine times out of 10, when we start brainstorming those con concepts, we will sit down at a conference desk, but we're not there for very long. Pretty soon we're all hovering over a whiteboard and scribbling down ideas and erasing things and taking pictures with our cell phone to remember different drafts. And, and that's really where, you know, to me, it goes from an idea to uh, starting that path towards a physical item. And, it's, and so my, my love for drawing, my you know, rudimentary ability to kind of form shapes helps me to communicate what's in my head to my team uh, and vice versa. And we can, you know, sometimes I'll draw something and they'll come in and they'll draw on top of it. So it's this beautiful collaborative effort. So, you know, I, I, I kind of had a roundabout way to getting to where I am now, but, you know, I, I, I definitely credit the ability to, you know, um, express myself through drawings as an important role in, in being able to do what I do now. Yeah. And you can take Jack's roundabout way, or if you want to do, <laughs> if you want to do an internship at NASA too, um, you, and I'll put the info in the link below, but you can, uh, NASA takes all kinds of interns and interns is, is, is a paid job at NASA when you're a college student and you can come and work for NASA. I want to I want to do it. You want to do it? You want to do it? Yeah. Can, can, can 60 year olds do interns at NASA? Well, if you I go back know, and I, go back I, and get a, a different I'll, degree I'll, and you can I'll, come back. I'll be trash cans at the, at the, at, at, oh, wait, 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 Mario already did it. Show me that picture. I got to show you this. Jack, can I show me the picture with oh, Mario? Oh, please. Yeah, absolutely. Mission control. Okay, Jack. Jack and Patricia, they took, I don't know if any of you, if you remember the Secret City, remember the Secret City out there, someone send me a text, do you remember, do you remember this guy who played uh, Cindy the Dragon, and he played uh, Zeptron the Robot, well look at this, Jack Moore took us to Mission Control, and there's Zeptron right here, there's Jack, and there's Harry me, there's all fuzzy me, there's Jack, you handsome devil, and look what Jack did, Jack surprised Mario with an official... There's Mission Control right here, right? They're docking the Dragonfly resupply ship to the International Space Station. And Jack, I always get choked up. I, I always start to get all teary-eyed. He let Mario. See, Mario's a, my special ability. He's 18-year-old, and he loves sweeping. And Jack got him an official mop, and he got a, a mop to do an internship at Mission Control. Thank you, Jack, for that. I'll always remember that. That was that was a and great Mario, day. That, that was cool? a really one day. That was super cool. And and you don't have to be just someone who wants to work in mission control to be an intern or or an engineer or a scientist. NASA takes interns, um, if art students, um, teachers, business people, accountants, all sorts of jobs um, are available at NASA or on the contractors for all the companies that work in, work with NASA too. So lots of cool and, jobs. And again, I, want you, I want you guys to fill out that online application. Try it. Start even if you're, you know, young and you have years until you're eligible, start a relationship communicating with their folks now. So parents, start a, start a communication relationship. And it takes many, many, there's, they, let's say they have uh, 10 openings. They might have 500 applicants. Uh, keep trying right here. Keep trying. And if you really want to do it, if you really want to do it, and if you work hard enough, you can give yourself the statistical chances. Keep trying. Never give up. Never surrender. Right, guys? Life is a flop. Just like your drawing. Never give up on your drawing. Just turn the page and start again. Life, look at Jack. Look, Patricia, I gave him a little driver's license to, to fail. I love awesome. that. Right? Yeah. Patricia, you, you had a, a, we talked last night about this idea of you have to fail to succeed. That's right. Right? And, and, and you do, and, it, and it's the same, it works the same at, at NASA. I mean, you think about when you're creating a rocket, a spacecraft, a spacesuit, I mean, whatever you're trying to build that's gonna go into space, the first idea you have and the first prototype you make doesn't always work the way you thought it would work. You know, your first test of that piece of equipment might fail. It, it might not work at all, it might spark, it might do something weird you never expected, and that's okay. NASA 
know that as, as you create and you invent new things, you'll fail over and over and over again. And each time you fail, you learn something new. And engineers and scientists get really excited when there's a failure because then they're like, oh, well, now we know that won't work, so let's do this. And they start kind of putting the puzzle all together and they test it again. And then we keep testing and testing <laughs> and testing until, until we get it right and we know it's safe and it's ready to fly into space. And so um, it's, it's okay to fail. You, you learn from it. it it's, it's, a good, it's a good process. And I, uh, if I could do a shameless plug, this is terrible, but I, I'm just so, it's such a good life example of, of, uh, of keep trying. It was it, my experience with getting my, my drawing books published. It, it's, uh, I did uh, 18 books and four or five were complete flops. Maybe they sold, you know, uh, 93 copies, right? And my whole goal was to, to get the word out of that anyone can draw. Anyone in the world can learn how to draw if you just take the comp and take your pencil and take a few of these principles I'm talking about. And how on the book number 19, I finally got this book, right? So it, it just never give up. Keep trying, keep trying, keep trying. And you will be amazed with what you're going to be able to accomplish. You're going to make your dreams come true, kids. Dreams do come true. Look at this. What a dream. I'm here drawing with Jack Moore and Patricia. <laughs> you know, for the world on our live webcast. So, this hey, Mark, a, we've a, got a really a, cool question. They want to, uh, one of your viewers wants to know if, um, let me see, I can't remember who it was, but they wanted to know if uh, if there are any um, um, artists that are astronauts. Maybe Jack, I bet oh, you can yeah. answer that Oh, yeah, oh, my gosh. Yeah, uh, in fact, um, there, are, there are quite a few astronauts that, that love to draw and express themselves through art. Uh, there's... A lot of musicians you know mm -hmm. the first one that comes to mind chris hadfield you know he uh, worked on the international space station and played the, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> uh, played the guitar yeah played the guitar yeah it. you know and uh nicole stout is a uh, um one of our retired astronauts is a prolific artist you know and she uh you know when john was talking earlier he was talking about all the colors that that you see you know from space and she makes it a goal in her works to really kind of capture how vibrant the art is and so her her pieces are beautiful. Um, one of my favorite uh, artist astronauts was Alan Bean, who was an Apollo astronaut. So he had that unique perspective of being on the moon. I mean, you think about that, that's a very rare experience for humanity. And, and he was able to create these artworks and these pieces that related what that was like. And so it, it's kind of amazing how, you know, when you create art, you're trying to express something emotional. Uh, and in his case, it was such a unique emotion standing on the surface of the moon. I mean, how do you convey that? And when you look at his art um, and his depictions of the lunar surface and his team during Apollo 12, I, I think he does a beautiful job capturing it. Um, and, and his works were really kind of fun because in his original paintings, he would actually take it. He, he got to keep one of the patches from his spacesuit that he wore on the surface of the moon. So, you know, as he would paint, he would take a little piece of that patch and kind of break it up and sprinkle it in his uh, paints and, and he would paint. So, you know, in theory, a lot of his uh, original works have these little fragments of, you know, uh, of something that was on the surface of the moon. So it's kind of amazing how a lot of our astronaut core uses art to express that and to really share that experience with the public. And, and to me, I think that's a huge, um, you know, public service to being able to relate that, that emotion. You know, we have these beautiful pictures we have incredible data, but how do you, you know, it's like uh, that old saying, like the capture sees all, um, but knows nothing, right? That That's the job of the artist to convey the emotion. So, you know, there are a lot of uh, astronauts that are artists. Those are just a few that come to mind. What about Al Bean? Uh, Did you talk uh, about Al Bean? Well, I, hope that, I hope I was talking oh, about Al Bean. Oh, okay, Albie. sorry, sorry. I'm listening to the, <laughs> sorry, I'm listening to the YouTube uh, stream in my ear, and oh, yeah. Streeter oh, was, that... texted me, oh, and yeah. so I was making sure we oh, got okay, that one. Yeah. Sorry so about that. That was Al Bean. The, yeah. the moon astronaut was Al Bean. If I said somebody else, I'm, I'm way off course, <laughs> but that was Al Bean, um, you know, very talented artist. Um, uh, and even cosmonauts, Alexei Leonov uh, did these beautiful works. He was the first person to do a spacewalk. Uh, and then also worked, uh, did the Apollo Soyuz program, but he did something I thought was really interesting. He would take up a small sketch pad and draw what he saw from space. And, and that was almost mm -hmm. like making notes. He would capture 
this image. And when he came down, he would create these massive canvases that were like six feet wide and 10 feet tall. And he would project onto the canvas what he could remember from his notes and his sketches from space. Uh, and then he would display those side by side. And I always thought that was a really neat way of capturing that experience. So, so yes, you know, there, there are a lot of astronauts that, that love partaking in art. And, and I hope that, you know, as we go back to the moon uh, with the next woman and the, or for the, for, with the first woman and the next man, that, you know, they have an artistic expression uh, of what they're experiencing. So we can, you know, in, uh, ride along with that. So that's, that's, that's a that's a great that's a question. Nice segue into me saying, that's a wonderful segue to be saying, you need to have an old cartoonist come <laughs> on the mission. And so that's the, exactly, that's it. You need to have me. Everybody, everybody who wants to see Commander or Admiral Mark says, Admiral Mark. Give me a, <laughs> Admiral, uh, Jack gave me a, a rank increase at Mission Control. That was really cool. <laughs> but you, at Omar, you need you need an old, you know, old funny cartoonist up there to to uh, draw to communicate to the world the images with through pictures. Well, um, Mark, I, I, you, you know. Quiet there. You got awfully quiet there, Jack. I will say that um, the astronaut office is taking applications right now. <laughs> so there, there are some minimum requirements that, that you have to meet. But hey, nothing ventured, nothing gained, right? So yeah, what do you think, Mario? Should we should we uh, drive down there and we'll we'll, uh, we'll we'll do an application? Why not? Here now, if I did a little drawing here, Patricia and Jack, just to remind the the kids and the, the viewers and participants. Take this drawing, use this as an inspiration, as a launching point. What is your gateway going to look like? What is your launch pad? What is your space capsule going to look like? This is They designed this by different artists and engineers and scientists getting together and sharing ideas. They all had their own drawing versions, right? And then they just made the most practical one, correct, Patricia? Yeah, yeah. Own, uh, yeah, you have a lot of engineers and folks kind of work together to come up with a concept, and it changes over time. If anybody's been following... Orion over the years, you know that it's changed. Um, the way it looks a bit's changed. Same thing with the Space Launch System rocket, it's changed. Um, and uh, and we're excited because our mission, Orion, is, is going to be safe and it's going to be successful and we're going to fly our astronauts um, to the moon. And so even though um, we, we get the, the chance to fail at our tests as we're figuring out what best to do and how best to prepare, um, when we finally get to that mission, you know, we're so far, far along that that it'll be safe and successful for our astronauts. So having the license to flop and testing and failing is all kind of what happens at the beginning of the program. And then as we move along, we've flopped and tested and failed on uh, plenty so that we know that we're not going to flop and fail when it's time to launch. It's about well, minimizing risk, perfect, right? Perfect way to articulate that. And uh, I want to take a look at Jack's drawing up there. Jack, that is so that's so cool. Look at we both we both are drawing the Artemis, but look at just between the two of us, we have two different perspectives. And Jack added extras. Look at the brilliant moon. Look yeah, at the I, star. Look at the planet Earth. I can see I can see Houston, Texas on his little globe down there. There's so a, I I added my the, my passenger. I I tried to put my cat in there since she oh, wanted he wanted to be part of the uh, broadcast the today. So. There she is. Oh, you know what? Uh, there's there's Lando, and I'm going to have him uh, operating Mario's vacuum here, because believe it or not, that's operating your vacuum on the space on the capsule on the Orion capsule. Hey, well, Patricia and Jack, I think that this is a great place to, to wind it up. We did we had such a great time. Thank you everybody for participating for joining us. Thank you, uh, NASA team artist Ar Artemis, you artist. And uh, Rad for thinking of this idea. I, I'm just tickled pink. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. Remember, go to the website, NASA, get this link and learn how to draw Artemis. Remember, we are going. Yeah. It's so awesome. And don't forget to share your pictures with us. Like I mentioned, if you do hashtag draw Artemis and you post it, your parents can post it to Twitter for you or our Instagram, then um, our NASA social accounts, we're looking at all of those awesome pictures that are you're drawing and yours might be one of the lucky ones that gets reposted so that, you know, hundreds, thousands, maybe even millions of people get that get to see your Orion drawing. And uh, we've got some more in the series coming. Uh, yeah, there's a Space Launch System rocket 
um, guide that's out and we're going to release new aspects or new parts of our, our Artemis mission and all the different pieces and, and pieces of technology that it takes to get us to the moon again. We're going to release different things for you guys to draw over the course of the weeks. Yeah, so be sure to download the... Uh, the yeah, let me, uh, before we say farewell, let me do one more shot of me and my son, my uh, my co-pilot here. There's, there's Mario. Uh, where are you, Mario? There you are. I, I got to get out of your way. There you go, Mario. There's Mario. Thank you for driving with us today. Show him your shirt. There's your shirt. And uh, there we go. You can, you, you say, you talk to, uh, okay, hold on a second here. Oh, there we go. And then uh, I'm going to have, Mario wants to tell you, Jack, something. As soon as we hang up, we'll call you and Patricia, okay? Okay, Jack, sounds good. good. All right. All right. So yeah. we have a he, – he, he loves you guys. We love you he too, Mario. You, to you and the girls come back up and we'll play Jenga. All right. Oh, that sounds, sounds fun. Good. So we have, you know oh, – Mario wants to show the vacuum he drew. Oh, very cool. That's going to be very helpful in uh, vacuuming up our space dust, right? So we're going to go to the moon. It's very, very dusty. Very so Mario is going to be very helpful. Those are some good, awesome. good designs. Thank you. You've been awesome. All right. Well, hey, Jack and Patricia and uh, – John, for coming on, and all of you viewers out there, um, thank you for spending part of your day. Keep drawing every day. Stay positive, stay creative, and just be patient with each other out there when we're going through this time. We love you guys. All right, thanks. We're gonna we're gonna uh, leave you guys with a video um, that uh, is another great work from some of our NASA artists, and we we hope you enjoyed us. And Mark, thank you, thank you for letting us. Uh, play on your channel and, and uh, drawing along with us and giving us your creative interpretations of, of Orion and you know we look forward to, to doing this again sometime so uh, thank let's you see, let's, before we go I'm going to see how many of you out there would like us to do episode 2 of a, of a Saturday special live for the Artemis program give us a Give us a yes. Let's see how many yeses. We want another one next Saturday or the Saturday following. What would be the next one, Jack? If we do do one, yeah. it would be what stage of the Artemis yeah. to the moon? It, it would be the Space Launch System rocket, which um, is the most powerful rocket ever built. And it will launch Orion to the moon. And it will launch Orion on future missions. So we're going to have a series of Artemis missions. We've got Artemis 1, 2, 3, and so forth. And Artemis 1 is our test mission with Orion and SLS with no crew. Artemis 2 has astronauts flying and orbiting the moon and then coming home. And then Artemis 3 is 2024, and that's when we're sending the first woman and the next man to the surface of the moon. So three Artemis missions coming up quick. We just got, uh, we got Japan saying yes. We have Emma from Scotland saying yes. We have India. We have a two from India saying yes. This is awesome. <laughs> yes, that's all us. I over at my, my YouTube feed. I know this is, we have Avery saying yes from, I think Avery remember, from uh, Sacramento. We got New York City. We have Pakistan saying yes. This is awesome. We got our viewers from all over the world. And oh, we got Scotland again. We got to go Kurdistan. Kurdistan. Hello, Kurdistan. Wow. That's awesome. I love you guys. And Australia, there might I have I have one family down in Australia that comes on to all my day. They must get up at two in the morning. <laughs> so thank you guys for coming on and drawing with us. We love you. And and now at the end of this show, I know I keep, keep, this takes me ten minutes to end the webcast. I know I'm such a, a chatter. <laughs> but at the at the end, I'm going to show you guys. Jack's going to roll in a little graphic for my drawing in 3D website. Um, Thank you guys. I had so many of you in the last 53 days uh, sign your families up for my for a membership. I'm so proud of this site. We've had it for over 13 years. Uh, now it's over 70,000 members, 70,000 families have drawn with it. It's 500 commercial free lessons uh, for drawing, turbo kit friendly, super, super family friendly. And uh, also, if you see the, in the graphic, I'm offering during this crazy time on the planet. I want to give everybody 75% off, uh, and I hope maybe that'll help a lot of you get on. My goal is to get uh, millions of kids and families drawing together to share creativity and imagination. Thanks, Jack, for letting me uh, do a little plug there. Uh, well, thank you, thank you for doing this, Mark. This has been great. We love engaging with your fans. They've got great questions, and so you know we're looking forward to again doing this again soon. And uh, you know as we Say goodbye. I think we'd leave everybody with a, a short video. Is that all right with you?
It's not that short. It's <laughs> but Five it's minutes a, short. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Beautiful. It explains how we're going to the moon and all of the cool, amazing um, artists, and, and, and you get to see all of their work and how we tell our story. All right. Thanks, well, guys. Bye, everybody. Bye. We'll see you guys later. Between 1968 and 1972, America launched nine human missions to the moon, six of which successfully touched down, allowing 12 men to walk on the lunar surface. NASA's next chapter of lunar exploration, called Artemis, has the task of not just going to the moon to create a long-term human presence on and around it, but also to prepare for ever more complex human missions to Mars. In short, everything we must be able to do here we must first do here. So, what will an Artemis mission look like? Everything is designed and tested with our most important element in mind, the astronauts. This is their deep space, human-rated spacecraft called Orion, built in three parts. The crew module, where up to four astronauts will live and work throughout the flight. The service module, with life support systems for the crew and its own engine and fuel reserves and a launch abort system with engines capable of pulling the crew module to safety during launch should anything go wrong. To accomplish the task of launching our crew and heavy payloads, NASA is building the Space Launch System, comprising of a cargo hold, an exploration upper stage, a massive core stage, and two extended solid rocket boosters. Altogether, this is the world's most powerful rocket, and it exceeds the legendary Saturn V of the Apollo era in numerous ways. Sitting on the launch pad, the entire rocket, fully fueled, weighs just over 6 million pounds, 5.2 million of which is just the fuel. Once ignited, there is no stopping what comes next. All four RS-25 engines and the two solid rocket boosters come to life, thundering our crew upwards. Two minutes after ignition, the solid rocket boosters are spent and released. Eight minutes after launch, the core stage is depleted and separated. The upper stage fires briefly, placing Orion into a parking orbit around the Earth. Here, the crew reconfigure the spacecraft and check systems to confirm everything is ready for deep space travel. With a go from mission control, the crew reignite the exploration upper stage engines to leave Earth entirely. The exact timing of this maneuver is critical to reach a speed that can escape Earth's gravitational pull, but also put Orion on a course that will intersect the moon days later. Once this burn is complete, the upper stage of the SLS is jettisoned and the crew aboard Orion coast for several days toward all that awaits them at the moon. Approaching the moon, we see the fundamental differences between Artemis and Apollo. Instead of requiring Orion to serve as an expendable lunar command module or to carry a constrained lunar lander, the Artemis missions will take advantage of a different approach, pre-staging. Everything needed for lunar missions will be positioned in advance by commercial and international partners. This includes rovers, science experiments, and human-rated systems on the surface. But it also includes a dedicated lunar station in orbit around the moon called Gateway. Here at this station, we can pre-stage a robust lunar lander and establish a strong communications relay. Designed with open standards, the Gateway can be expanded as new missions and partnerships develop, allowing multiple human missions on the moon at the same time and enabling ongoing science to be conducted even between human missions. The Gateway is also capable of adjusting its orbit to allow access to every part of the moon, something the Apollo missions could not do. But the real key in this approach is placing Gateway in a unique halo orbit to perfect the maneuvers needed for Mars missions. And with the growing list of commercial and international opportunities, Gateway is the ideal hub between Earth and all that lies beyond. Returning to our crew as they approach Gateway, the Orion must match the elliptical orbit of the station in order to successfully dock. Once on board, pre-selected crew members transfer to the lunar lander, while those assigned to Gateway remain on station. The lunar lander system itself is built for three unique steps. Descending from the halo orbit of Gateway down to a low lunar orbit, descending from low lunar orbit to the surface, and once the lunar mission is complete, launching from the surface of the moon and ascending all the way back to the orbiting gateway. Once back aboard the Orion spacecraft and undocked from gateway, the crew fire their engine once to break out of the halo orbit and once again to sling the spacecraft around the moon, placing it on a multi-day trajectory back towards Earth. As they near the end of this journey, the service module is released 
and the crew module is oriented heat shield first. Entering Earth's atmosphere at 25,000 miles per hour, the friction of air slows Orion considerably, while also subjecting it to temperatures of 5,000 degrees. With the Orion now at just 300 miles per hour, a series of parachutes uniquely tested and produced for this moment deploy, decelerating the craft to just 20 miles per hour for splashdown. With each successful mission, Artemis ushers in the next wave of men and women to explore our moon and prove that together we are ready to go beyond.